Hi everybody, I thought I'd put out a video today, which is actually a follow-up video for Ricardo Garcia's uh, video that he put out last night on March 14th. And I seen some more information that I thought was pretty massive that I thought I needed to add that to his video. And so I will present that here. But on a side note, um, Ricardo is going to have surgery on March 18th. So please pray for him, brothers and sisters, that his surgery goes well and that he heals quickly because his wife is also pregnant and their daughter is due in a couple of weeks. So there's a lot going on in his life. So please pray for him. But I wanted to do mostly information that he put out yesterday and a few or two videos before that and i'll include links to all of that in this video so with that i'll go from here as the time is short so since the time is very short i'm going to grab a lot of information from ricardo's uh, channel including pics uh, instead of coming up with my own pictures. But anyways, I would recommend that you go back and look at the videos that I'm going to put in the description box. And I'm not allowing comments because the time is short. And I notice that comments are getting more nastier and uglier with more scoffing and mocking. And we don't need strife within the brethren but rather to uplift each other. So I'm going to cut off the comment for that reason. But he's got a lot of videos, as I said, on uh, Purim Rapture. And so he has in particular that when Esther really lived, Queen Esther, so during the time of her reign, there in around 480 B.C., there was a lunar eclipse on March 25th, and there was a solar eclipse on April 8th, and that's identical to what we're having the same date with the penumbral lunar eclipse on March 25th, followed by the total solar eclipse on April 8th. So uh, the heavens seem to be uh, repeating that and screaming Esther is the time frame and Esther is associated with Purim again. Also earlier, there was an asteroid 622 Esther, which is named after Esther from the book of Esther that also transpired uh, in January and February, which crowned the constellation of Virgo, which represents in this case, Esther the Queen. And so with all that going on, uh, it is showing a strong indicator of a Purim rapture. So like Ricardo Garcia mentioned, and also Jared at Supernatural by Design, there's identical eclipses on March 25th, April 8th, also September 18th, and October 2nd, and they both occur in the year 480 BC and 2024 AD. However, my focus will only be for the first two eclipses for March 25th and April 8th. I'm not going to go into this because um, there's so many channels already covering the total solar eclipse make an X across the United States, but more so on the March 25th upcoming penumbral lunar eclipse. So here's the partial lunar eclipse that was seen in the white area predominantly. And then as you go out into gray, not as much, but the white is the 100% partial lunar eclipse area of viewing. So the central part of it is over this line with the dot here. But definitely in the area of Iran, 
it was seen at that time and negative 479 is equal to 480 BC because of the year zero. So it's offset by one year. So you have to round it up by one number. However, with this upcoming penumbral lunar eclipse this year in a, about nine days, its greatest will be seen in this area that's highlighted in pink. So over all of the Americas, but in the deepest part of the penumbral lunar eclipse towards the center, it interestingly is 480 kilometers across. So that being yet another confirmation of 480 BC and then 2024. So Ricardo also mentioned that Esther was crowned in the 10th month of Tibet. And it says here in Esther 2, verses 16 to 17. So Esther was taken unto the king Asaharis into his house royal in the 10th month, which is the month of Tibet or Tibet as we say now, in the seventh year of his reign. And the king loved Esther above all women, and she obtained grace and favor in his sight more than all the virgins so that he set the royal crown upon her head and made her queen instead of Vashti. And that occurred again in the 10th month of Tibet. Also, as Ricardo mentioned, and so did Patrick at Rapture Watch, uh, that the asteroid Esther, 622 Esther, which is actually named after Esther in the Bible, if you look at when the sun enters the 10th constellation or the 10th month, it's between January 19th and February 15th, and that's in the constellation at Capricorn. So you can go see this on Ricardo's thing. So tracking the asteroid Esther from that time period of January 19th through February 15th. This is where the path of that asteroid is starting on January 19th through February 15th. And it in fact is crowning her head. But also there are the two solar eclipses that occurred on the same date. Again on April 8th, 480 BC at the time of Queen Esther's reign and then the upcoming one next month on April 8th of 2024. And that's all I'll mention here, but they are on the same dates. However, Purim is celebrated in the 12th month of Adar and uh, not going by any calendar, but the solar uh, calendar, which uh, Ricardo also presented. So that would be the sun is in Pisces. And so in Esther 9, 18, it says, But the Jews who were in Shushan assembled together on the 13th day, as well as on the 14th and on the 15th day of the month. They rested and made it a day of feasting and gladness. Therefore, the Jews of the villages who, dealt in the, who dwelt in the unwalled towns celebrated the 14th day of the month of Adar, which is the 12th month, with gladness and feasting as a holiday and for sending presents to one another. So it goes on to say in Esther 9, verse 26, Wherefore they called these days Purim after the name of Pur. Therefore for all the words of this letter and of that which they had seen, concerning this matter and which had come to them. So if you look up the word pur or purim, you see down here that purim is Hebrew 63:32, And if you look at it, pur or purim means lot or peace. And this is because they had cast lots to determine Haman's destruction 
which was hanging him and his sons at the gallows. So you can see that also in Esther chapter 9. So as with Esther and casting the lots, and that being Purim, well, Pur is lot, Purim, or with an I-M at the end is the plural. So as the days of Noah were, so also will the coming of the Son of Man will be likewise it'll be the same during the days of lot so i think the bible is alluding to the time frame of purim and according to ricardo's calendar the 12th month of adar occurs when the sun enters pisces and that's between march 11th and april 17th so then the first day of Adar would then fall on March 11th, being 311, 311. Then the 14th day would be March 24th. The 15th day, which is Purim Shushan lots, is the following day, falls on March 25th. And that's the same day as the penumbral lunar eclipse that's coming up. So moving on as to why this might be the season or specific date during uh, Purim for the rapture, Aaron at got him in it. He actually had put together not Saul, which is the Hebrew word for snatching away, catching away. And I'll put a link to his video as well. But for 2024, not Saul, which means to snatch away, which is the Hebrew word for harpazo, is found in Psalms 124, Psalms 91, and Psalms 26. But I'm only going to touch on Psalms 124. So in Psalms 124, verse 7 in particular, which is the not Saul or the rapture verse. So it says in verse 7, our soul is escaped as a bird out of the snare of the fowlers. The snare is broken and we are escaped. And here it is written in the Hebrew. I know this is a bit of an eye chart, so I'll show you it larger. So the word not Saul is encoded in verse 7 of Psalms 124. And it's known again as the rapture verse and not Saul is spelled Nun Sadih Lamet, and that's found in Strong's 5337. And Hebrews read from right to left. So you see an equal letter spacing of Nun with five letters in between, then Sadih with another five letters between, and then the letter Lamet. So it's actually the first letter is noon, then one, two, three, four, five letters, and then you have sadih, and then another five letters, which is one, two, three, four, five, and then you have the Hebrew letter lamet. So this is the hidden word of not Saul or rapture that's encoded in verse seven of Psalms 124. However, what's also encoded in between not Saul, which is highlighted in the pink letters, you have Pur, which is the strong 6332, which is spelled Pe Vav Resh. And so you can see that highlighted in the green, the yellow, and the teal, which spells Pur and that means lot. And if you go further over, it has the yod and mim, which is the I M. And that spells Purim. But that's outside of the not Saul, but it does have that all encoded in that same verse 7. So that's really exciting to see both not Saul, which means snatching away catching away deliverance with the word per which means lot but it also has an 
I am 13 letters or 14 letters away from the per part shown here as the yod mem. So since that was the case, I thought I'd go and check and see if the word Pesach or Passover spell uh, in the Hebrew Pesamechech, and it's not found anywhere in verse 7 nor in any part of Psalms 124. So only the word pur or purring is found in Psalms 124 and not the word Pesach or Passover. So when I was reading in Esther pertaining to the days of Purim in chapter 9 of Esther verses 18 through 19, I'll read it again here, but it says, but the, but the Jews who were in Shushan assembled together on the 13th day, as well as on the 14th and on the 15th day of the month, they rested and made it a day of feasting and gladness. And in verse 19, therefore the Jews of the villages who dwelt in the unwalled towns celebrated the 14th day of Adar, which again is the 12th month, with gladness and feasting as a holiday and for sending presents to one another. And I was like, where have I heard that from? So I just read Esther 9 verses 18 through 19. Here's 19 again so that you see it. It's got feasting, sending presents and gifts to one another. And that's on the 14th day of Adar. But in Amos 8.10, it says, I will turn your feast into mourning and all your songs into lamentation. I will bring sackcloth on every waist and baldness on every head, and I will make it I will make it like mourning for an only son, and it's in like a bitter day. So you might be saying, what does that have to do with Purim? And also I'm going to read here Daniel chapter 9, verse 27. Here it is with the words, again, reading from right to left, associated with the Strong's Concordance above it. So I'll put it here uh, for English. It says, and he shall confirm a covenant with many for one week. And that's Strong 7620, which is Shavuot or Shabua. And in the midst of the week, Shavuot or Shabua, shall he cause the sacrifice, which is Strong's 2077, and the oblation, Strong's 4503, to cease. So Ricardo also was talking about uh, the UN seven year deal. So I'll put the link again, as I said, to his videos so you can go back to refer to those. But I wanted to try and condense everything as best as possible in one video. So looking specifically at what's uh, highlighted here in the red box, which is the sacrifice and offering, or some say oblation. And again, that's the Strong's 2077 for sacrifice and Strong's 4503 for the offering or oblation. So looking at the Strong's H2077, which is Zabach, another word that can be used instead of sacrifice or a sacrifice is feasting. And likewise, the Strong's H4503, Minka, instead of offering or oblation, it can be a gift gift or gifts. So in Daniel 9.27, not adding any words or taking away from them, he shall confirm a covenant with many for one week, and in the midst of the week, he shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease. And using those other choices from the Strong's 20, 77 and Strong's 4503, 
again, not taking away any words from the Bible or adding words to it, it can be instead, and he shall confirm a covenant with many for one week, and in the midst of the week, he shall cause the feasting and the gifts to cease. So now going back to the Feast of Purim, mentioned in Esther 9.19, I believe this is for the Gentiles. Therefore, the Jews of the village who dwelt in unwalled towns celebrated the 14th day of the month of Adar with gladness and feasting as a holiday and for sending presents or gifts to one another. Whereas for the Jews in Amos 8.10, I will turn your feast into mourning. And they have their feast, Passover, Shavuot, and Sukkot, and all your songs into lamentation, and will bring sackcloth, which are the lunar and solar eclipse on every waist, and baldness on every head, and I will make it like mourning for an only son, and it's in like a bitter day. So on Purim Fest in Israel, it's a day when the Jews and even the Orthodox Jews get completely wasted, and then they dress up like Mardi Gras and also zombies and stuff like that. So that is what I believe Amos 8.10 is referring to being your feast day will turn into morning. So I think this is why I think that Purim instead of Passover might be an extremely high watch date for the rapture uh, to occur. And again, that would be between, if not on March 25th, the day of the penumbral lunar eclipse, all the way through the total solar eclipse on April 8th of 2024, next month. So I'm not saying it's going to be specifically on the day of the lunar eclipse, but that's the day of Adar 14. And then maybe there's all the way up through to the solar eclipse on April 8th, because those are identical to the eclipses that occurred during the reign of Queen Esther um, in 480 BC and again in 2024. So a Purim rapture, possibly on the 24th, 25th of March, on the day of the penumbral lunar eclipse, which is on those two dates, depending on the time zone in which you live, seems to be encoded in Psalms 124.7 with Natsal and Pur or Purim and also alluding to the year 2024 with it being Psalms 124. So I think it is an extremely high watch date. And if we go beyond that, I think we will see uh, then the total solar eclipse on April 8th. And for the Jews, it will be the fulfillment of Amos 8.10, where sackcloth and mourning will come to them, a day of lamentations, sackcloth being the lunar and solar eclipse, and that will turn their day into mourning and bitterness. Anyways, I hope this video has been a blessing. Hopefully this is my very last video. And uh, again, I will put the links for Ricardo's videos and Aaron's videos uh, in the description box below so you can take a look at that. This is, I hope, the more condensed version uh, to kind of uh, put everything in a nice tidy box. But if you want to see all of the content of those, I'll put links to their videos again in a description box anyhow i hope this has been a blessing to you and uh, if we don't see anything happening on march 25th then i would jump over to april 8th 
the total solar eclipse next month and if we go beyond that then passover so anyways i hope this is a blessing again and if uh we are raptured i hope to see you in the sky so take care